and never get told. It's never. Dikembe Motumbo never gets in my old. house. Not never in my house. Old. Probably gets old to the people that aren't watching. They're just listening. Yeah, but it's a good song. But it is. Yeah, it's a sweet groove. Yeah, yeah. I, I get down every time you put it on. I, I kind of like. It's, yeah. Man, it's smooth. <laughs> it is. It's very smooth. Anyway, uh, I kept, I kept thinking we should, uh, we should write one. I kept thinking that we should write one, like we redid the intro. Uh, Cause I've gotten a lot of great comments on the intro, but yes, um, yes. man, I, I don't know that we could do something more smooth than that. That's just so good. I don't know. We're just not that. We're not that uh, soulful. Oh, yeah. 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 So anyway, yeah. yeah, yeah. Go, what were you saying? I was saying that he is Jim from Craving Strange. I am Mike from Something Heavy. Together we are Bacon is My Passion and this is Bacon is My Podcast. Yeah. And this week, this week, we're doing something a little different. We got a guest. So we oh, have to be oh, on our best behavior. Um, less exciting. Yeah, less exciting. All right, maybe not. Yeah. But uh, fun guest. Tonight, today, we have Zia Stark. Uh, for those of you who don't know who she is, um, she's a cosplayer. She's big on social media and stuff. But she was also featured in the Disney Plus documentary. Marvel 616 episode 5 it's called suit up She's suit up player and she was featured they they called her Amanda and she she wasn't too cool about that uh using her real name but we'll probably get into that a little later but yeah we're going to interview somebody that uh you know is important it's going to be exciting yeah somebody who likes uh comics the way we like comics even more so because probably even more so She's in a cosplay, and uh, for those of you who don't know what cosplay is, it's costume play. So, uh, so yeah. Well, she dresses yeah. up, and she dresses her dogs up. Yeah, which is super cool. So, which is pretty awesome. So, yeah, uh, sit back and enjoy our conversation with Zia Stark. Here we go. And he loves the countdown. Okay, so so All right, yes. everybody. We also have a sweet count that we never let get down to one. So here it is. And it never goes to one. Every now and then, though, I'll just. You never know when I'm going to leave and just come.
never goes to one. We never let it go to one. So, sweet, man. So, I would go with 10, though. <laughs> would, so would you say that snow somehow getting gusted up Looks like or white ash? Oh, white confetti. I didn't even say that one. Oh, that's, yeah, that, that, that actually makes sense, too. Yeah, we, like at a concert, and they're like, Ooh. Yeah, totally, yeah. right? Because then, that's another reason that it would kind of go down and then up as well. The The thing with the snow is that it's going upwards, so. Right. I thought it was stopped. ash. Yeah. No, he, he thought it might be ash. Maybe some Thanos ash. Maybe, maybe some Snap ash. All right, so welcome, everybody. Uh we want to welcome our first like guest. Well, yeah. no, second guest. Well, our first Danny was our, a guest. Our first guest that uh, that we don't know. Our first right guest that's not just like some random person on the internet. That's who I am. Of ours already. It's a new friend of ours. <laughs> yeah, it's a random person. So are we? That's three of us. Three random people on the internet are coming at you. Uh, Zia Stark. So Zia is a cosplayer. You can catch her on, you know, on the interwebs. And uh, she's also featured in the Disney Marvel 616 documentary series. Uh, it's episode five called Suit Up. And yeah. I learned, <laughs> I learned the hard way. I was corrected that uh, what, how they referred to you was, is in fact wrong. Well, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah. Yeah, Zia, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Happy to be here. Thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. Um, is it okay if we ask you about that? If we ask you about like what the name thing is? It they 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 did it unbeknownst. I keep, or? I, I keep my professional and personal life separate, and they kind of ruined that. <laughs> okay, okay, so when you when you signed on to do the show, you you are already doing things as Zia Stark, right? You are already keeping your professional life as its own thing. It's growing. And what's, um, you have a website, you have all your socials and everything. Can you lay them out for everybody right now so they can find you? Uh, yeah, my Instagram is just Thea Cosplay. Uh, and then I've got everything through there basically. But um, I don't, I'm not too active on there right now because of Corona and like, I don't, like cosplaying unless I'm going to hang out with my friends at conventions. So I haven't really been doing much on there. I've been a lot more active on my uh, Starks travel account, which is a little travel page. Oh, <laughs> Even though okay. I'm not okay. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, I am traveling, but smartly and safely. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Good to know. Um, so so you're, you're traveling. So like, how, how are you traveling? Are you driving? Because in no. the documentary, you did you did drive, or I, you I did do some of that. Yeah, I, both. The answer is okay. both. <laughs> I mean, okay. it depends on where. You know, like I can't really drive to an island, so oh well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what is what is your travel page about? What um what what exactly do you do there? What's what's the purpose of it? Kind of what's what's the whole vibe going on over there? Uh, it's just my personal um. It's more like my it's my personal page, kind of. I guess that's where I post um just everything that I've been doing. Like I went skiing the other week, so that's on there. Or like when I went to, um, I did a, a quarantine road trip, and um, I got I'd go to international places quite often. Obviously, not nearly as much this last year. Right. Um. Although, um, when things were pretty lax and the cases were going down, I did go to Mexico. So that was pretty fun. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's just kind of stuff I, <laughs> I guess it's just more like my everyday life, I guess. Okay. Um, but yeah, I was in the middle of like finishing creating like my own event, pers private event and personal traveling, traveling punk company. And um, that was like in February and then, you know, everything kind of yeah. closed. So I was like, I'm just going to put that on hold. And make fun videos instead. <laughs> so, That's awesome. Yeah. Nice. That's awesome. great. We both uh, 
we both are in bands and stuff and I've done an extensive amount of traveling as far as like touring with a band. So one thing that, that stood out to me when I was watching the 616 episode is you were talking about um, going to New York Comic Con and you were talking about going with a friend and you didn't know whether they were a good road trip person. Yeah. And that's something <laughs> totally kind of like uh, hit me like in the heart because um, I would, when I'm finding finding band members and stuff, I would have uh, new band members audition and things like that. And one of the biggest things is finding out if they're a good road trip person. Cause, cause yeah. you're like, we're going to be on the road. We're going to be gone for two weeks, gone for a month doing, doing this, that, and the other, you got to find out if, if they're going to vibe with you, you know what I mean? There's a lot that goes into that. So, so I'm interested um, from your perspective, like what makes a, a good road trip person? What makes a good like travel buddy? Someone that's not needy and clingy, uh, someone that can do their own stuff, you know, on their own time and not need to be doing something with you the whole time. Uh -huh. uh, there's a reason for that. I, I went on a trip with someone to like a con once and, um, it was like the first time I did that. And it was just awful because basically, because I didn't want to do one thing, they got really but heard about it and everything like that. And ever since then I was like, I'm just going to go by myself. So I was going, to, I was going by myself to like a lot of things. Um, I did do that road trip with Greg because he is my best friend. And like, I, I kid you not, I really did yell at him like a lot because <laughs> I got really mad uh, several times because I'm not the most uh, easy to get along with person. Sometimes I'm rather callous and it will often like, or I guess upset people and stuff um, if they don't understand that that's, you know, me. So I know that I knew that he could be okay with it, but like other people, I don't know if they're going to be okay with it. Well, I noticed that they didn't document the, the road trip. They, so asked any... for, they asked for me to send them the videos I got on my GoPro, which I'm going to be honest with you. I just like, it was like, I just don't want it. <laughs> I didn't want to go through it. I was lazy. They were like, yeah, okay. can you send us the videos. And I was like, yeah. Just never went through them. <laughs> well, so so you did like what? What was it like a twenty three hour drive? Because we're in New York as well. Where so yeah, it was, it was twenty five hours because we took a different way. We or twenty six hours just because we like we went and stopped in Nashville and we stopped yeah. in West Cincinnati one night and then we were gonna go to Pittsburgh but then we decided to skip that and just go to New York straight. And my dogs were. I had both my dogs with me in the car. Oh and, yeah, and uh, they're awesome. They're the best travel people ever. <laughs> people, <laughs> I, I I second that. Dogs are awesome to travel with. I um I I, I drive. Uh, all. I wouldn't say all dogs. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Fair enough. I uh, I I drive. Uh, I'm from Indiana, and I live in New York. So every holiday during the holidays, I drive home, which is about a 13 hour drive, which isn't bad. But yeah. I have. Uh, I have my dog, Bruce Wayne, who is a uh, uh, French Bulldog Boston Terrier mix. And uh, mm -hmm. he's he's my little dude. And he is he's my travel buddy for that trip. And he is totally awesome. And he's the best. And I, I agree with you 100 percent. You get those people that are like, you know, why can't we stop there? Or why are we stopping here? Or why can't I do this? Or what do you mean you don't want to go here? Well, yeah, yeah, I guess so. I, my main thing is more like when we get there. Like I don't mind doing stuff all together during the road trip because it's kind of the point of the road trip. Yeah. Like, once we so get to the destination, either. I'm like, I'm gonna go do this with these random people that I just met. You can do whatever you want, and then yeah, I'll see you later. <laughs> and like sometimes it's not okay with people. So I've wow. done most of my international trips. I've done alone. Um, I love it. I stay in hostels. I'll just make friends with random people, and then I can kind of do my own thing, do whatever I want. I would not be against someone wanting to come with me if I knew them somewhat, but I would not want them to stay with me the whole time. I'd say like, yeah, you can come and we'll hang out for like maybe 15, 20% of the trip together right. and then go do our own things. But I, I would not do something with somebody unless I was like married to them, I guess. I don't think. <laughs> Jim and I actually do. <laughs> Jim and yeah. I actually do a lot of work together and we travel a lot we, we talked about that in in, uh, in in past episodes but like so yeah we we travel we've been to a ton of places what I, I so we went to Iowa and that's probably been the most interesting time that we've had 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We found that some of the some of the smaller towns, and I found this both with traveling with Mike for us doing stuff, and then also with the band doing stuff. Some of the smaller towns have some of the more interesting uh, stops and interesting people and interesting mm -hmm. places to visit. I love that stuff. Like I, I love yeah. everything about it. I'm like, oh, please feed me your your weird Frito chili. Like feed me what, yeah. what's going on. Yeah. Feed me your experience. Mm -hmm. Whatever. All yeah. of this. And uh, and we found that Iowa we had a fantastic time in. What's what's one of the places that you've had an amazing time that you wouldn't have thought that you were going to have an amazing time? Like does it have to be random then? What, whatever you think, whatever comes to mind. I guess, okay, so this last summer I was supposed to go to Sweden for the first time and I wasn't able to go because it closed. And I was like, oh, well that sucks. I'll move it to September because they open in, uh, on August 28 or whatever. And of course they stayed closed. So I was like, well, okay. I had like jokingly told my friends, I was like, you know, if, if Sweden closes, I'll just go to Albania, it's open. There's peaches there. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> and I didn't really like mean to or ever, ever, ever expect or plan to go there. It was like no no intentions at all. It was literally a joke that I was telling people. I was like, yeah, I'll just go there if it closes. <laughs> right. And uh, I had the best, I had to, uh, am I allowed to curse on the show? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I had the best fucking time. Like, I was just, it was so much fun. I met like, a bunch of random people um, over there. They're doing great. Uh, or at the time, they were uh, doing great. I don't know how they're doing now, but at the time, like um, mask wise, like uh, the, everyone be didn't believe in the virus almost. I'm not going to speak for all of Albania, but most of the people I ran into, like the taxi drivers were like, oh no, it's not real. And I'm like wearing my mask and I'm like, uh, okay, dude, like you're making me uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I don't want to get sick still. But <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I mean, like most most of the tourists, if there were any, were wearing them, but a lot of the locals weren't. Um, but it was such a good time because it was like one of the only countries that was open. So it was like all the people that were like all cooped up and like wanting to go do something were kind of there, I guess. So it was pretty fun. So I met a bunch of people there. Um, I did a road trip through the whole country by myself and I went to two other countries nearby as well that were also um, open and I had a great time. So I was never expecting to go there at all. I never foresaw myself going there this year. That was really random. That's awesome. <laughs> I had a great That's time. really cool. Um, so have you been to Seattle? I, I, I lost that. Yeah, once. Yeah, did it suck as much as we thought it sucked? I like it. How did it. you find it? Um, it wasn't rainy when I went, so it was great, I thought. But again, I don't know. It wasn't rainy. When I went, it was like that was the trip I did with that person that I didn't have a good time with. Um, so overall it was kind of like not as good as it could have been. But I I loved it because I got to meet Paul Bettany on that one and I love Vision. Ooh. He's one of my favorites. And that's kind of how my dogs cut a lot my dogs got more famous from that trip because he posted the, my dogs and tagged them on his personal account. That's and awesome. I think I got like 8,000 followers in one day on their, on my dog's Instagram. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I mean, I'm not like uh, one for really caring too much about that stuff. Obviously, as you can tell, because like, I mean, I was in that show and I, I still haven't really been posting anything. <laughs> I mean, it was great. I love being on the show, but it's just I, I don't try to. Well, that is that is one thing. I noticed. That's one thing I noticed is that like when I when I saw the show and then I knew that you were going to come on um, and do this, uh, I I was like, okay, let me kind of do a, a little bit of like a stalkery deep dive, you know. And and I checked out your other sites and everything, and I was like, oh, she's really not like like capitalized on this. No, I could be. <laughs> yeah, you you really could be. And, but I think that's cool. I, I, I think it's like, um, and you came across like that on the show too. You came across as kind of like, yeah, I'll do it if it's fun, but yeah. I, don't, I don't really care. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I like that. Like I, I that yeah. spoke to me cause I, I thought that was really cool. Um, what, 
like how did the show come about like how did that like how did they how did you find them or they find yeah. you i just found my dog okay. um so my dog does have if she had twenty four thousand followers and we were at san diego comic-con and uh, we, that? i'm sorry um the cosplay dog on instagram okay it's uh if Merlin. you want to link that up yeah um and um so yeah I used to take her with me uh, because I needed to. I don't take her anymore and um, because I don't need to anymore. So I'm happy about that. Um, but yeah, so I took her to San Diego Comic-Con in I think it was 2008 now. I don't know, I think it was 2019, yeah. <laughs> and we did one of the um, like little, the Marvel booth had the little Marvel contest thing going on. Right. And my friends were like, oh, let like, go up there. And I was like, no, I hate contests. They're stupid. <laughs> and then they were like, no, just do it. So Merlin can walk across the stage. And I was like, okay, fine. So I did. And I had on the Iron Spider costume. Mm -hmm. And she had on the Iron Spider costume, but she had like the legs. She had right. the legs. Yeah. Her, you know, they actually had that. They had that on the, on the special as well. Oh, I don't. I, yeah. I didn't know. I watched it, but I didn't see that part. I hate. I, I listen. I don't watch. I don't watch these after we do them or listen back to them. I just think about so just hope for the best. Yeah. yeah so I, I don't judge they, if you don't watch it. It's cool. <laughs> I did, but this is from that, so I don't know if anyone didn't see her. But there's the little legs. Oh, that's and awesome. And yeah, that's me awesome. behind that's so her. Cool. So she can like she can see through that and everything. She'll walk around. She'll say hi to people in it. She's happy in it. And um, so I just walked across with that. And like we, uh, one of the I guess people that worked for Marvel like really liked her a lot. And they like came up to me after and started talking to me and were like, "We're gonna do this show. Can I get your email?" And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> so I gave her my email. Didn't hear anything for like a while. <laughs> and then they emailed me. I think. Uh, it was like a two months later or something. And they were like, we're going to come out and film you. Like, do you want to do that? And then you're going to New York Comic Con, right? We can film you there too. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so then that happened. And that's just kind of, that just kind of happened. Like I, I definitely awesome. was a little surprised. And then when they came, they were like, yeah, we can do this and this. And I was like, well, I kind of help at the time not anymore because of the virus, but at the time I ran all of the social events and on our Houston cosplay page. Oh, okay. um, we have uh, several admins. I'm just a, a moderator, whatever the step below admin is, but I was the active one. So I hosted all the events and stuff. And I was like, yeah, I can host like a little get together and have everyone wear their costumes. So that was that thing on the show. And all of my friends were so nervous. <laughs> I don't know if you could tell, but they were like being weird on the show. I was like, guys, just act normal. Like, we yeah. know what to do. And everyone was just like, I was like, what are y'all doing? Well, it's funny because like I do, funny. I do like, um, I do like medical conferences and and doctors when it's the first time. Like, really, when you're when you're uh, doing camera stuff, you should you're just like a fly on the wall. You're like, okay, don't you? I'm not here. Like, don't worry about me if if we ask you a question, whatever. Um, I, it wasn't that it, like I it did. They didn't come off to me like that. Like your friends didn't come off to me like like. No, I know, but I could tell. I could okay. tell. I know right. that it doesn't. It doesn't seem like bad at all in the show, but like I can tell in the show that like well, some you, of them were just kind of. Yeah, I could tell the way some of them were standing in the back, and I was like, I just thought it was funny. There's, nothing, know, wrong, there's nothing wrong with it at all. I thought I just thought it was cute. <laughs> It's it's always funny like that. Like you know them as as who they are and as people, and um, I've I've had the same thing. Like we've uh, like if you do anything where you where you're on camera, you know, even if it's I mean that was a pretty big deal because it's going to be on Disney Plus and it's Marvel. Marvel. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's huge, right? Like I don't even know what that would what what kind of pressure that would even be like, but I know that even in cases where you know you do something like a we've done little shows where we've just kind of live streamed to people and it's like members of my band will be like awkward and stuff i'm like what are you doing like, yeah what? yeah <laughs> suddenly I mean, they, sound like a, they sound like a game show host all of a sudden and they're like hey everybody yeah. i never talk like this 
I'm not gonna lie, I was like pretty uh, nervous when they filmed me in my house. And then like, when I was watching the show later, I was just like, I was like, I don't wanna watch this. <laughs> this is just embarrassing. <laughs> And like I don't I don't dress the same anymore either. And I was like I was just like oh man I'm wearing that stupid fucking eyeliner and shit. <laughs> and I was like oh god. <laughs> okay, well I think I think the biggest question is this: Do you still have that cool mural on the wall? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's finished now. It wasn't finished at the time. Yeah, I was gonna say is it? It, it looked like there was some space, so. Yeah, well, yeah, it's done. It's done now. Um, it wasn't done at the time because, um, yeah, I don't know. I just, it just wasn't finished at the We're time. In progress. That's all. Yeah. I, I was, I was really interested. Like, I thought it was super cool that you make that you make all the costumes for the dogs. I think that's yeah. super awesome. Um, I have like little to zero uh, sewing and and um, knowledge of fabric. <laughs> whatsoever i've uh i've been to be like, honest me neither I can, my, I can put my hand through this pocket so i should probably fix it i've done that a number of times yeah uh, and so even you saying right now like that, that you don't have that either like you've made some sweet costumes like those like, are pretty did you, awesome. that, did you make that iron spider one for the dog yeah yeah for me no well yeah i saw no, that no, you, yeah. you said you said that you made all the costumes for the dogs and everything and you made mm -hmm. you said you made about half the costumes for you um were any of the costumes that you wore on the show made by you that yeah that i sewed the the whole cable suit the undersuit the okay. part that no one really paid pays attention to i sewed that whole thing all right the, um, the, the cable outfit was the cable sweet. outfit was sick that was that was totally sick it's like one of my favorite ones yeah and oh my God. i have a confession i was so drunk when they were filming these. <laughs> like, like you have no idea because they weren't, I didn't know they were going to come up to me at that time. They were like, yeah, we'll like find you. We'll, we'll find you at the con and stuff like that. And um, the normal stuff they texted me to come meet them for, um, which was fine. But then like, they just like, we were kind of having a big crowd around us because I was drunk Cable, and then we had right. Deadpool and a drunk Cyclops. So, <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> it was a good time. And they saw us because it was just like a madhouse around that big upper part at New York Comic Con. And and then they're like, yeah, like, can we film you now? And I told him, I was like, at your own <laughs> risk, buddy. Like, <laughs> that's, why, that's, that's, that's why in the show, I was just like, pew, pew, pew. <laughs> I don't even remember doing that. <laughs> That's awesome. I, have, I think I had like six drinks or something and no food. So That's amazing. It's, that's so funny because uh, it actually Wait, did... it cuts into one of my questions because I was going to ask you like uh, because when you're when you're there and you're in the middle of that. Right. And, and everybody is coming in and asking for pictures and and wanting to be around you and probably wanting to touch the outfit and stuff and nah. uh, like i would have to be i would have to be liquored up to deal with um, that i like after it. a point it's like a, and so i, I, was, I was gonna yeah. ask i was like were you drinking yeah i was totally gonna mm -hmm. ask that it's so funny I mean, that's, that's like i said that's why i go to cons is to go have fun and get drunk with my friends oh, too, right and and then you get all the people that dress normally that want to take pictures of you and it makes you if it's a, if it's at somewhere like that like if it's at a big con like that it kind of makes you feel like you're famous for a day or famous for uh the con and right. it's fun i would not want that all the time so right. that's kind of why i really like cons it's like okay let's go be famous for a weekend with our sick costumes and then go back to our normal lives <laughs> So that's, that's straight up that's straight up like a show yeah, yeah. that's pretty for, awesome for yeah on. yeah absolutely yeah wow. we we get we like being being in a band being a musician you get the same thing where you're like let me you know when we go do a show or anything it's like for that hour or that however long we're on stage you you're like important and then you get off stage and everybody wants to talk to you and meet you and everything and then you can leave and you can yeah. be like you leave cool. you go home that's the best part when i go like <laughs> When I when I go buy shit at Stop and Shop tomorrow, nobody's coming up to me because I nobody knows who the hell I am. But for that moment when when you're there, it's like, oh my God, you look so great. You're so cool. Let me take a picture yeah. with 
you let me you know let me let me put this on my instagram let me be a part of this for a moment and it's a really cool like it's a cool thing to be able to step into yeah i like it a lot i you mean know? to be uh, to be honest if the COVID didn't happen i probably would be capitalizing more on it i just have absolutely no motivation to be doing cosplay stuff right now like it's just uh, yeah i also we, don't have any time like at all i'm so busy it's ridiculous so are, are you still are you still running the uh the dog hotel or no yeah okay uh, how yeah that's awesome that how, how awesome. do you how do you do all that <laughs> yeah. how do you juggle that and, and take trips <laughs> and all that kind of stuff um i don't know i have no idea um i have a couple <laughs> I have like contract workers and my roommate um, runs it or manages it while I'm gone or my dad or something will help. Um, so, I mean, I don't know, like when I did Albania, uh, my roommate did almost all of it the whole time. Um, and then I had, uh, when she had to do stuff, then I had contract workers. And when I say contract workers, I mean, just because I let them pick their schedules. I let them pick how to do stuff. It's just, as long as this 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 happens it's fine um i don't care how you do it or when you do it it just yeah so yeah i haven't gotten around to like actually hiring anyone officially because it's really hard to do and i would have by now i would have by now but uh covid (laughs) i think i was making three percent of my regular income in april so yeah Uh, i yeah 100 i feel you (laughs) But it's gotten like really busy now, but because because of COVID, I was like, okay, no one's traveling. I need to market my daycare more. Right. Um, and when they were filming me, that was a slow month and I didn't really want to do that because again, I like to keep it separate. Keep it separate, yeah. But um, it's fine. I don't think any of my clients are watching this, so it's fine. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I was like, okay, I need to market my daycare more and everything, and I it did pretty well at that. So I have like regular daycares now, and I have to get up at like seven every morning, and then they leave at seven p.m. and it's exhausting and. <laughs> Um, I was like, damn, I don't remember it being this exhausting. And I was like, oh, that's right. I didn't really have daycare before. <laughs> <laughs> Something I will say is it, it like wa- watching it and knowing what you do for a living is like, oh, good. She's a dog person. Yeah. Things are good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know where mine are. Kirby. My, mine, are, mine are in the house. I, and, and like, so you travel all the time and stuff. That's that's why I asked. that's yeah, why you just leave them at the dog hotel then. Yeah, because my easy. my dogs we're we're freaking out. We're like, oh, we we gotta leave for. We have to go pick up. Okay, we got a puppy. Okay, mm-hmm. that's been the that's been the topic of discussion because yes, there's a new puppy in the world. In the bacon is my podcast world. Right, that little asshole <laughs> doesn't like to be alone for more than eight seconds and you need to crate train him oh we've been trying that's what i said we've been trying because you want them to know that it's a safe and a good space not a bad yeah. space and so many people yeah. will use crates as like time out and i'm like oh. uh, we <laughs> actually we actually <laughs> taught we taught bruce wayne that that he has the bat cave and so when we say bat cave, he like runs and jumps in his in his crate and he hangs out in there and everything and he and he and he likes it. I mean, he's got a few beds around the house because he's a little bit spoiled because he's the only one. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I got a few rooms. I got a few places. You know, in our studio yeah. apartment. <laughs> he's got a few spots. Yeah, but it's also but like a safety thing too. You want him to be okay with the crate. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry, you want yeah. him to crate him. So, so we got, we, so my first, my first dog, um, which funny enough, his name is Bane and he's like this 65 pound brute that he still hasn't, he won't bring Bruce Wayne over to go meet my dog Bane. I, I, I will. I want to, but Once still he's trained. <laughs> but he's we, like, but he's we, like we, waiting. <laughs> yeah. But, but like Bane is, is crate trained. So he was he was great he was aces from like night three he was amazing yeah and then this one just no dice 
no dice yeah. no matter what we do. No matter what we do. It just happens sometimes. They just need extra work. Um, and it's not a bad thing at all. I mean, they usually get there. I've noticed some of my, I mean, I, I do like crate free all day daycare and everything like that. Cause I mean, I don't, that's the point. They're don't, they're going to work and they're not wanting to put their dog in the crate so right. that they can come play with other dogs. So I don't do it. Um, the only time that we do is like, we have crates for the dogs that sleep overnight. If the owner normally has them sleep in one. If they don't, then they don't need to yeah, go in one. Um, but where was I going with this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. That's uh, what we do here. That's that's what we do. Oh, I guess I was gonna say like um, I, I definitely have noticed that um, with people being home a lot more, some of the dogs that have come for occasional boarding now that used to come like a lot more regularly. They have like such bad separation anxiety now because they're like working from home and they're home all day and they're spoiling the dog like a lot more. And then when they leave, it's like they're like going haywire and like crazy. Cause like it's not a bad thing, but it's just like, you know, when we shut down at night and then the one dog is just like barking 24 right, 7, yeah. and I'm like, oh, I feel bad that the other dogs have to listen to that. <laughs> I've, I've, have you noticed, like, I don't know if you've noticed, I, I probably, I'm sure you have. I've just noticed with, with Bruce that, you know, since March, we used to go to the dog park all the time. We were around other dogs all the time. We were walking all the time. We were seeing, you know, we're still walking and all that kind of stuff, but he's just not as socialized. And it's, and it's like, he became a little bit de-socialized. Mm -hmm. so yeah. I've seen when that. I went home Holidays, it's like my brothers came and there's and they have uh, they have the, an, an awesome bulldog named Gemma, and then my mom has a, a golden doodle, and we got all these dogs in the room, and they all haven't seen any other dogs for like months, and they've all been at home with like their owners for months, and they're all just kind of like, what do we do? I don't know what's happening, and they've all been like yeah. completely desocialized from where they used to be. Yeah. Are you are you finding that like when you're bringing? Yeah. Them? Yeah, but if they're boarding, they usually get over it. But like the second day, then they're usually like, oh, okay, okay, I was gonna, yeah. Them. They're like, oh, I remember. Like three days. What I'm to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, but if it's if they like if someone books like one daycare and they haven't been in like months, then like I noticed I was like, I actually just had it happen and I was like, he's he seemed like really shy and. um like staying to himself in the corner this time. And he definitely wasn't like that before. Mm -hmm. And she was like, yeah, blah, blah, and like telling about that. And I was like, yeah, I mean, um, it's just because, you know, he hasn't been around other dogs nearly as much because of the virus and stuff. Right. So, I mean, if you want him to get over that, not in a, I'm trying to make money way, but literally you need to bring him at least once a week. If you want like your dog to start, yeah. you know, being uh, more sociable at daycare. Um, yeah, there's only one way to be social. And I feel weird saying that to people sometimes because I'm they're like, oh yeah, like she just wants like they just want our money kind of thing. That's how I feel like some people might take it. And but I'm honestly, dogs should socialize, you know, yeah. multiple times to be able to become social. It, otherwise, they can't. Like if someone's like, yeah, I want to socialize my puppy, I'm gonna bring him like a half day once a week. I'm like, ah, eh, doesn't it doesn't really work. I mean, like they'll just right. kind of put in the corner usually each time because they're like scared and then it's not long enough and then the other six days they're like oh thank god i'm home and then they'll come back and be like oh i'm scared again so if they're like a puppy it needs to be way more than that but yeah, i've noticed yeah. actually too with my dog uh well i don't know about i don't know about the little one yet but um with with my dog bane when we would go away so we, we generally let my in-laws watch them mm -hmm. and when when we they would bring them over uh they have a dog at their house they have a wheaton terrier and, and bane terrorizes him for the weekend and it's great but they're so well behaved when you come back home <laughs> it's like it's like i can't believe you're back i'm gonna do everything right <laughs> things were things were not that bad before we left <laughs> I'm gonna be cool. 
and, uh, and and I noticed that like after the first few days, I don't know if you you noticed, like Jim, you don't you don't really see like Bruce when when he goes out, he goes away with with Annie, like and yeah, goes, I mean, does I mean, we like, have never done. He's like, just a been daycare with us. kind of thing. Yeah, he's just been with us. Like he's um, my girlfriend Annie uh, works with Joan Jet, and so. She go when she goes on tour. She goes on tour with Joan Jed, and they're all over the place. So if she takes Bruce with her, Bruce is on the road with like a arena rock band, and he's he's an honorary Blackheart, which is awesome. That we got pictures of him in, in front of their logos and all that stuff. Yeah, and 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 so he's so the thing is though is that when he's there. There's hundreds of people there that are he's backstage. He's obviously, you know, he's like in a room, but there's people in and out of that room all the time. So he's very used to new people and different people and stuff. And he's just kind of cool with everyone. He's, yeah. he's very chill. Um, and then with me, he just kind of goes with me if I go anywhere. So so generally we've never left him anywhere. We've always just brought him along with us no matter mm -hmm. what. So, so I haven't had that experience of like leaving him with in-laws or anything like that. The closest I've had is like any time that, um, that either I've gone on tour while Annie was on, on, was out on tour. Cause she's also in a band. So if both our bands are on tour or if she's working with Joan or anything like that, our landlords have taken care of him. So he still had his bed, his crate, his spot. So it's never been an, anything like that i've never i've never had to do that yeah, but even even my in-laws like they they'll because my in-laws live like like two miles away mm -hmm. so my mother-in-law will like sleep here and then again i come back home and bane's like yes yes well, he, knows you. he knows you man he knows you. yeah he knows your smell he knows you but then he's he, like but then he's dude. super good he's super good for like two days well, yeah, I mean, my dogs are the, the, the opposite. Oh, really? really? <laughs> so my wiener dog will get angry if I leave. And like, so out of spite, when I well, return, she'll be like, you left. I'm going to piss on the bed. Dude. <laughs> now that you're back. That's I, I always wanted a dachshund, and that's the exact reason why. Because everybody who tells me, or anybody who has they a dachshund, are spiteful is wieners. like, we love them. I've, they're spiteful I've, as fuck. I've they're always, stubborn. They're spiteful. I, I have heard that wiener dogs are dicks. Yeah. <laughs> they right. are. They are. And I love them. And having a wiener dog is like being part of a cult of wiener dog owners. It's like what we are. They're like, oh, oh, we have a wiener cool. dog too. Then we're friends. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I literally have like wiener dog shit everywhere. There's a card here with them on it, and I have uh, my key rack is wieners. My floor mat says the grass is greener under my wiener. Um, wow! <laughs> well, there's there's a, a lot. lot of, uh, one. It just lends itself to so many phrases. It's perfect. Oh, I have a barbecue pit, and like there's like a picture of guys like barbecuing wieners on this like sign that I have, and it says like it's all fun and games until someone loses a wiener, and there's like a wiener dog <laughs> running away with the wiener. <laughs> it's endless. It's yeah. endless the puns. It really is. <laughs> However, don't use those puns outside of America. People will think you're weird. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I bet. I bet. If you say that in Australia, they'll be like, I ah, just like every time I've done it, whenever I travel internationally, they're like, what's a wiener dog? <laughs> and then like one of those like groups of dog? one of the groups of Australian people that I met, um, they were like, Stop saying that. Like, stop saying wiener dog. And they're like, it's <laughs> sausage dog. No, that's not that. Oh, really? They they yeah. like it's a totally different word. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Well, it's, it, uh, and and you know, like we're we're like super accepting around here. So my, you know, like my, my brother in law is actually is transgender and stuff like that. But so like, I have family in Ireland, and the family came this way uh, over to the states, and <coughs> one of the one of the cousins actually brought her fiance husband to be. And um, 
he showed up and he and he like puts a thing in my face and he goes fag and i was like what and it's a cigarette so it's gotta yeah. be it's, cigarette. well yeah i didn't know that then that was that was back in like 2000 or yeah 2000 or 1999 or something i was like you didn't know a cigarette in 1999 <laughs> no it was more so a cigarette back then than yeah I, I was gonna say <laughs> <that. laughs> when, when was i in ireland i was i was young it's not just not ireland a... man it's like all of everywhere it's everywhere yeah. but here yeah god well i haven't i hadn't been anywhere but here all right New York, just uh, yeah, it's culture stuff. But, but yeah, the wiener, I, I guess, I guess that can, that can get lost in translation a little yeah. bit. Yeah, it's funny though. <laughs> I, I will say, as someone that's like, I've I moved a lot when I was a kid, and then I traveled a lot once I started getting in bands, and then I moved to New York, and I still kept traveling a lot. That I've I've found that like a lot of. Um, it's, it's very common when I meet people that didn't travel until later in, in life that things like that, like they just hadn't heard it ever. It was just kind of like, what? Where as I heard it way early because I, cause just yeah. because I happened to meet someone or be somewhere mm -hmm. or something like that. So yeah, I'm, sure. I'm, a, I'm a sheltered child. Zia, when did you start traveling so much? Like, what, my at what point? My first international solo trip was February 2019. Okay. Actually, January 2019. It went into February. <laughs> Before that, how much traveling had you done around the U.S.? I have. I had already been to all 50 states before I was in um, ninth oh, grade. That's awesome. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know very many people that have been to all 50. Like, that's, yeah, that's crazy. That's a pretty big deal. That's super cool. What, what, um, like, was it just it. a love of traveling? Like, what, what My started? I was on a road trip every summer when we starting in like elementary school. And, um, so like we did one section one year, one section another year, one section, one section. Oh, one section. That's, that's cool. Alaska. <laughs> and I love when I tell people, yeah, I've been all 50 states. They're like, wow, even in Alaska? And I'm like, yes, part of the 50. <laughs> <laughs> That's included. That's included. That's and six. what's funny is that it's harder to get to Hawaii than it is Alaska. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's long. I feel like it's a longer flight to get to Alaska. It's a longer flight, but you could oh. technically... It's cheaper, I guess. It's yeah, easier. you can get there easier. <laughs> Technically, I guess. Yeah. To me, I guess it feels like, like you can it's get to Hawaii because it's connected. Jim, Jim's a Cause jerk because I've been in Canada. I, what, what, I'm I a jerk. Wanna... Why? What happened? Because you were you were in Hawaii. Oh, I was in Hawaii. I loved it. It was fantastic. Yeah, I want to go back. I do too. I have to Ever. I, what was it? What was your favorite place uh, in Hawaii that you visited? Kauai, the uh, black sands on Kauai was my favorite. Awesome. I, I and also, then there were a bunch of wild chickens there, and I liked seeing that. <laughs> I didn't see any wild uh, anything in Hawaii. Uh, which, funny enough, but I did go to um, I. I had a really good time where, where I went to, uh, and the name's escaping me right now, probably because I've had a few drinks, but um, Maui. where they filmed like Jurassic Park and where they filmed Kong and uh, oh, we went okay. to, yeah. I can't remember, I can't remember the name of it, but we went to was the area island? where, what's that? Was it an island, a city or like a, a It was park? a city. It was like, yeah, it was a certain area in um, in Honolulu where, oh, where in they Honolulu. did it. It was, uh, but we went we went to the like the sites where they where they filmed a couple of these things, uh, which was really cool because um, we saw like the as as much as I I love the non touristy stuff. I also love the touristy stuff. Oh yeah, like, I'm all, I love all I'm all about it. I'm like. You show me the Jurassic Park wall. You show me that. 
I need to see this. And, uh, and we got to see it and it was awesome and it was super cool. Um, and it was just so beautiful. And we, we hiked up a couple of mountains and we swam in a lot of, uh, the water was just amazing. I saw some giant turtles. It was, it was super cool to be there, but I didn't see any animals in the wild. So I saw no, I saw no wild chickens. Well, but I think they're only in Kauai. It's, uh, the like most Western one. Um, did you meet the big, the Western one. What? Did you meet Nene? This was like 12 years ago. So, uh, so it was before, it was before no, Moana. It was, it was, yeah. it was, it was pre Nene. Yeah, I okay. think it pre-nene. was, I think I was like 14 or 15. Uh, I went. Uh, I went in in twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen. I went. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. I was gonna go in March. Huh. Huh. Didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, one one thing I did uh, that that I did kind of like take away from watching the show and kind of like looking at stuff that you've done is that you're. Uh, I like. I, I love that like entrepreneur kind of spirit that kind of like, I'm going to work for myself. I'm going to do my own thing. That's, you know, that's what we're trying to do here as musicians that was, we've been trying to do forever. Um, You know, it's just that spirit of like, I'm not going to have somebody clocking me in and telling me what to do all the time. So I, 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 I love that and respect that about you. How long have you been kind of, working for yourself and and always, kind of like i don't know i've always been like doing my own thing um even if it wasn't like for money or something i was always trying to start something um right. like because okay so before all this i had like a second life or a different life right. um i was into cars and oh. I'm, not, I'm not into that at all anymore like i mean yeah okay i mean i would be if i had enough money to do all three of my expensive hobbies but i don't I was like, so I made a, I made a decision before I went into cosplay. I was like, okay, cosplay, cars, travel, cars gotta go. I'll do the other two. So that's kind of oh. what I did. Um, but I used to have like a 2002 Trans Am. I named it Dragon's Breath. There's like videos of it on YouTube. Nice. <laughs> um, and so it's it was black, and I had the front of it like the front part where the fog lights come out was like faded into red, and I had a nitro system that sprayed out the nostril with like. Oh red smoke <laughs> so that's why i call it dragon's breath that's amazing um and i have so like good. stage three racing cam full umi racing suspension and everything and so i started this was like when i was 18 to 21 i i had it since i was 16 but okay. when i moved to houston when i was 18 i wanted to start something i was like i want to do stuff i want to have social stuff so i tried like having like heart i was like trying to host car meets and stuff and um mm-hmm. i hosted dino nights i don't know if you know what that is but uh, yeah yeah so yeah. i was doing that and i wanted to like i wanted to, i was like oh i want to make a cool video for it so i like bought a video camera and like tried filming it and they weren't great videos obviously because i was using my hand no gimbal nothing or whatever and um before iphones had like the stabilization I, I didn't have a. I had like an actual video camera, right? Um, and this was eight years, seven years ago, eight years ago. So you know the cameras weren't as good unless they were a video camera, you know. So that's why I got one of those. Right. And so I was just like always trying to do like my own things. And uh, there's this thing in Texas called the Texas Mile, and I started like the car show there because I was like, you guys don't have a car show. Let it, let me host the car show part of it while everyone does the mile race thing. Um, so yeah, I was always just trying to do stuff on my own. <laughs> that's so cool. Uh, like that's that's just just that like that that spirit to do something. You know what I mean? I have like a need to do like uh, everything. I try to do everything, and I burn myself out. <laughs> I, and, I understand completely. And I will still do it, even if I'm burned out. I will just keep going until I die. And that's absolutely that's where I'm still at. Because I'm definitely burned out right now. <laughs> if you're not swimming, you're drowning. That's you know? why. I, that's why I was like, okay, you know, I'm kind of okay with the cons not going on right now, or else I would be dead. <laughs> because well, I would be trying to do everything. <laughs> I, I for one, I appreciated that. I thought that was super cool. Um, just because I, I love that that ideal, like that idealistic, and that that 
spirit, you know, like that's something that I've always kind of had, but the idea that like anywhere you go, you're, you're just like, I'm going to do something. I'm going to start something. I'm going to create something. Yeah. You know? I, I think I've been able to do that most. Anyway. Yeah. Like watching, like watching the six, one, six thing doesn't give you quite that view of you because, um, you know, it, it shows like the, the, the comic con stuff and it shows the the cosplay stuff and it gives a little bit of like uh oh she's a go getter because there's the you know there's the uh the the dog stuff and the and the pet stuff it, you know like you're you're doing things and you're kind of go getter but it doesn't really lean into it right right so but that yeah. was something that I that I kind of got out of it that I was like oh this is interesting I I you know like I wonder I always when I when I meet people that just can't not do things. Yeah. <laughs> I always, I always am interested in kind of like finding out like, when did that happen to you? When did that become a thing? Like, how did you discover that, that you were like, uh, like you know, bored. I'm just going to do shit. I, you know, like if I, I don't, I get bored or I feel like I'm not doing something productive or something. I don't know. Yeah. I, I have so many things going on. Like, I'm like, oh, I want to play. I want to stream Warzone. I want to be like a streamer and stream Warzone. I want to travel and make travel vlogs. I want to do yeah. the dog thing and have like my own business. I want to teach English online. I want to learn this language, this language. I want to live in this country. And I'm just like <laughs> all over the place. And I'm like, I can't do everything at once. So as much I, as I as much as I really want to move right now, like I really want to live in Europe right now, I'm well, like I'm waiting until I'm, I'm, I'm waiting no. until my business is ready enough to where okay. that I can leave it and right. it be okay. So I'm like, okay, Corona is kind of giving me an advantage here because I can't go do anything. So right. I might as well focus on so it makes you focus this yeah, up. It's here. Yeah, so we already turned one of the rooms. There was like a garage. We turned the garage into another room. We're adding AstroTurf this year. We're changing the conversion for the dogs' food storage area. Um, and uh, yeah, just a bunch of different things going on right now. And I'm like, okay, just like stay. I know you want to not stay, but just stay until you can, can't take it anymore. <laughs> where, where in your Europe, do you want to go? Like, do you have a spot? I, do you have a specific? Yeah, I want to live in. I want to live in Stockholm. So. Oh, okay. Cool. What 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 about Stockholm spoke to you? Um, I really like the language, like a lot. Um, I did date a guy from there. Um, well, not exactly date, but talked with a guy from there for a long time. I'd say over a year and a half, and um, just over that time. I met a bunch of like his friends and then I made friends when I was traveling with more Swedish people. And I was like, wow, like I really, really like the language. And I was like, oh, I want to learn it. So I started learning it. Um, and then we stopped talking quite a while ago. So, um, and then I was like, oh, I'm just going to keep continue learning it. And then I just kind of like really fell in love with it. And yeah, I don't know. And it just, it's something I want to try. I might hate it. I might not like it at all, and then I might go move somewhere else. But um, I'm finishing my degree in applied linguistics now, as well as education, so that oh, I can, wow. so that I can like officially teach English over there with like good credentials. Like I could just take my TEFL and go do it right now because I do already have two other degrees, so I could do that right now. But I'm like, oh, I shouldn't because I don't want to throw away this dog thing that I did, and I need to make right. sure it's ready to be able to leave it. Um, right. So I'm like, so while I'm waiting, I might as well get my resume looking better. <laughs> and um, I'm trying to become fluent in it. So I have like tutoring lessons with the, a guy online uh, pretty often during the week. But um, yeah, so that, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to like it or not. But that's why I was going to go last summer was to decide to finalize if I really did want to go there. Um, but I think I have like 30, 40 friends there. So it's not like I'm going like completely alone. Right. Um, yeah. Even if you yeah. go for a year, it's like you're partying for a year and hanging out for a year and then do something else. Yeah. Go to another city. I also want to live in Amsterdam for a while, at least exactly. a year. And I'd like to live in Budapest and Prague for a year. 
Very cool. Very so, cool. I've heard some good things about Prague. How many languages do you know? Um, I'm conversationally fluent about in Swedish and then English, of course. Um, I do speak Russian. I learned that um, my great grandpa's from Russia. So okay. I don't know if you've looked at my profile at all. I have my name is in Slavic alphabet um, from that. Uh, and I didn't learn it through them because like my mom's mom died when she was eight. So like I never got to like really meet them or anything. So it's not like I learned it through my family. My mom only speaks English, um, but I decided to take it in college for two years. And um, I don't remember all of it, obviously. I'm not fluent in it. Um, but like if someone like airdropped me over there, I could get around. <laughs> OK. okay. Um, right. and I do have. I do have a Russian tutor that I use every now and then just so I don't lose everything because I don't really have many friends that I speak Russian with. I have a couple, maybe like three um, in the States. Um, but yeah, it's not, not anyone I regularly talk to. But like when I play Warzone, I play with um, three Swedish people quite regularly. And so we're talking in that. All so, you, you, so you talk a bunch of shit and... <laughs> In that language. Yeah, in yeah. I curse in that. I curse in Swedish quite often. Um, number one, because it sounds not nearly as vulgar, and I don't like how I do cuss a lot, and I don't like sometimes that I do, but I don't want to not stop. <laughs> so right. I'm like, I'll, I just do it. I'll just do it in in this language because no one knows what I'm saying. Then, like, they probably know I'm cursing because they're like what <laughs> but they don't know what it means and it actually kind of sounds nicer like it doesn't sound nearly as uh so give us your top two what's your top two, top curse, two, in top two curse words in swedish just two i can say a whole sentences <laughs> well wow. i'm sure you can i'm sure you can so um, so give us give us your give us a give us a good so like sentence. if i die in war zone and i'm like what you know like that kind of thing and i just right. start yelling at them okay um, so I'll just be like, Fifan, they're a little hood of cooking, and it's like stuff like that, and it's just fun because, um, my friends know what I'm saying, and then they think it's funny because, like, they're like, Oh, I can't believe you know that. Where'd you learn that? <laughs> See, that sounds lovely to me. That sounds yeah. lovely, Fifan, that sounds welcoming, <laughs> it sounds welcoming yeah. and warm. My favorite one, though, is Fan Yavlachit. Oh, what's that? Uh, it's like damn fucking shit. Uh, okay. Nice. That's three. That's three in a row. Yeah. 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 No what was the first one though? Fifan. It's just like an emphasized fun. No, I mean like the first when you said that the whole first. Oh, you're a, you're a little bitch, cock. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I love that one. I that I will say better. that. I think that's better than the first one. Cursing sentences in other language when you translate them to English, I really I, I love how they're laid out. Like like your little bitch cock is a yeah. is a great sentence that you might not say in English. Yeah. yeah. So like for example, we like the they and I will say uh, while we're playing like cooking cooking like and directly that means the cock and like that's not. <laughs> Like, you know, that's not like well, something that like you would yell in English. Speak <laughs> yourself. Uh, I talk to that all the time. <laughs> the cog, like you. <laughs> how, I mean, how do maybe you like cooking? Uh, Is that how you say it? Yeah. Is that it? I'm going to use it. So I'm going to use it yeah. liberally if that's how you say it. Oh, oh, you want to know a good one? Okay. So, yeah. you know, uh, Spanish, it's not really a, it's not really a curse word, but. Um, in Spanish, you know, everyone says, por favor, or yes. please, right? Okay, so sometimes um, a lot of uh, European people like to learn Spanish as a, as a third language other than English. So a lot of my Swedish friends are like, they want to learn Spanish too. So they maybe took it or something or, um, as kids or growing up. And so when the teacher would tell them like, por favor, well, in Swedish, por favor means porn uncle. So they would always think it was like really funny learning how to say please because they're like, oh, por favor, por favor, my porn uncle. <laughs> well, there's like a whole thing for that now, right? Everyone's aware. 
Beware of your porn uncle. <laughs> like, that's so funny. I can I can see why that would be so weird. Learning oh, that as a child. <laughs> See, I, I took um, I took German, and in in German, every word, including the curse words, sound like baby talk. Uh, but, know, like, but aggressive baby baby talk. Aggressive, yeah. Yeah, they're aggressive aggressive baby talk. But like babies, when they learn to speak, they speak aggressively. They yell at you. You know, as far as I, as far as I know, I don't can have you, any. Can you say babies. anything? You, so like um. Like even the nice things sound like insults. Yeah, like I if, if I want to say like, uh, like Mike, you're looking thinner, right? Right? I can be like, Dubis Mike, do I, dude? Well, I guess you can yell it in any language, right? Right? You can yell it. You, anyway. you have to yell that way. Right, but like even the like dumbass is dumerazel. It sounds like dumbass. Yeah, that's funny. Right, I think, and I'm also oh, uh, dumerazel. I've never heard of that one. I feel like different languages are perfect for like different things. I feel like German is great for like yelling. Yes, um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Russian is great for just like sounding like a dick or being mean or something like that. Uh, Swedish is great, I think, for cursing to sound funny. Or um, flirting, I think it sounds cool. That's a good kind of, it sounds pretty cute. What's flirting um, in Swedish? Um, like, How would you yeah. flirt with someone in Swedish? I like the Arsovaka, so sneaked. Like I don't know, I just I like the way that it sounds. Um, and they ha it has more of a like broader expression than like ours are more specific. Like oh, you're really cute. You're really fine you're really pretty yeah. you're really handsome well they just kind of have like one word to mean like three like fien is like fine pretty nice and then okay. black good is beautiful gorgeous um etc and then sneak is my favorite because you can say sneak sneaked sneaking sneaker and like they all kind of mean something a little different <laughs> and you can use them as like so many different things um you can use it as handsome good looking like sick cool or like hot it's i'm just like how can it mean so many different things but it's all based on context so it just depends that's the uh, same thing in german with shane like du bist shane could mean you look you're you are beautiful you are pretty you are hot you are sexy any of those things are incorporated into that one word mm -hmm. right depending on how you say it so yeah that's that's i love how other languages kind of do that i only i only know like i took three years of german and i barely know how to i i yeah. couldn't even have a real conversation um basically my german classes were us speaking german while the teacher took money from us playing euchre that's <laughs> that's how that worked <laughs> but we all got, got a's so we all took it <laughs> that's cool I, I don't know. I but, feel like uh, German. Would be but I always want to learn. But I want to learn Dutch first, even though less people speak it, just because I'm half Dutch. But okay. I don't know. Okay. I would want to learn it. I don't know when I'm going to. Right now, I am uh, trying to learn Hungarian as well. <laughs> so Swedish, I'm just adding vocabulary. Oh, wow. I've got the grammar and structure and basics and everything down like that. So I'm just adding a couple words a week with that. Um, but le learning from scratch, I'm trying to learn Hungarian right now, which is like one of the most hardest languages. Wow, that's yeah. Yeah. Is there, like that's a, uh, I mean, that takes, I don't know any Hungarian at all. I'm just trying to think of like, where's Hungary? Okay, what's it gonna take from? Which, it takes from around? everything. It takes from everything. Uh, the closest language that it's related to is Finnish, actually. Okay. Okay. Um, Interesting. But, so, what, what made you want to learn? What made you want to kind of like do Hungary? Um, same reason I learned Russian. Um, I I have I can get my citizenship there if I learn it. So, okay. Because my uh, also on my mom's side. So my mom is completely Eastern European. Oh. Okay. Um, 
yeah she wasn't born there um but like when the, her family came over they all settled on like this one hill in pennsylvania and then they married and and uh, kind of stuck to the same ethnicity i guess gotcha. <laughs> so gotcha. my mom um is mostly hungarian and then just that one great grandpa or great great grandpa was russian so we i actually just found that out because we didn't even know um because it's really hard to find out um how'd you find it she out? didn't even know she didn't even know her mom's like how to spell her mom's real last name so it was really hard to find our records and stuff and i've been working on it on ancestry.com for a bit gotcha um i always guessed russian um, so I was pretty happy when I actually proved it with that, that guy. This happened in October. <laughs> um, so I was really excited about that. And so um, she's like 65, 70% Hungarian and then um, the other part Russian. So when I found that out, I was like, I was like, oh, sneak. Like I can get my dual citizenship there if I go over there and can find, right. if I can find the, um, marriage certificate over there or their birth records officially which you can if you find a lawyer and find someone to do it you can and then you have to take the test in hungarian so that's why i'm learning it because <laughs> i really want to do that because then it would be so much easier to move there and work there and everything it's awesome that's awesome and, uh, very cool here's your wiener here is the wiener i found her she came to me <laughs> <laughs> has a, a really strong mouth fetish. She likes to lick a lot. Ah, that's good, though. All right. all right. What we're going to do is we have a sponsor. They're called Poddex. Okay. And what they, they they're like, they're like cards against humanity. They're really cool. Okay. Um, but so this is the interview deck. And you're gonna pick your question by. Uh, you're gonna choose a finger and a location. Right. Finger. Okay. So we've already proven that I'm a really good. I'm a really good uh, shuffler. Yeah, he's a much better shuffler than me. Though I lived in Vegas for a year. I'm terrible. Jim at it, lived in Vegas. Shuffler. And he's a spastic. He's a way I'm better good. guitar player than I am, but not as good of a shuffler. I don't know about that, but definitely not as good of a shuffler. So, Zia, I'm going to hold this up. And based on <laughs> finger location and where, you, which way, which question, which card do you want? Which question left, do you want? Left pinky finger. My left or your left? Your left hand's pinky finger. This one? Whatever your left hand is. That's yep, the that's one. Left. <laughs> okay. So here is the uh, Powered by Poddex question of the week to Miss. Don't forget. Zia. Don't forget. Go to poddex.com, promo code BACON. If you were to die and to come back as a person or a thing, what would it be? Hmm. Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> Good Ooh, answer. That's a Good great answer. answer. I might come back as Aviation Gin, but not a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> but could be. I just feel like he has a lot of fun, like with Hugh Jackman all the time. And oh, I, yeah. I like that. Like I would have their, fun. Their social media stuff is, is he seems crazy. like the funnest, the funnest dude. <laughs> Yeah, he seems fun, and I, yeah. I like I like being fun. So if I came back like as him, like I think I would be able to do fun stuff like he did, and maybe go down the same path that he did. <laughs> what knows? I say, what I say right okay. now might be an unpopular opinion. Fantastic but, answer. But if I don't know, I feel like Ryan Reynolds wouldn't be Ryan Reynolds unless he actually played uh van wilder i disagree i think van wilder would have been even more horrible of a movie if it wasn't for ryan reynolds you think you think 
Ah, see, I, I feel like he kind of draws off of that. Or maybe maybe see, that's I, just, I think maybe that's just you him see him in like but you see him in like waiting and you see him in all these movies and and he just makes all those characters just I don't think Ryan Reynolds is a great actor. I think Ryan Reynolds is great at making every character him and he's insanely watchable. And okay. so he just okay. makes that character him and then you want to watch it and you want to check it out. I don't think he's a bad actor. I just, I just no. don't think like I, I just see the same guy in every role that he's ever played. And so I think that's Ryan Reynolds. And so I think like I want to hang out with Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And it's not a bad thing. It's right. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I do I do like that answer. I absolutely do like that answer. Yeah. I, I, I think Ryan Reynolds is a is a good answer. I feel like another good one would be um, Christoph Waltz. <laughs> he plays interesting. The, he plays the yep. Nazi and in, Glorious in Masters. <laughs> also, an inter okay. interesting answer. I, yeah. I would, I would pick like I, I could say if I was going the same track as you, I would say like Ryan Reynolds too, and then I would be like Will Ferrell and Jeff Bridges. <laughs> oh, Jeff Bridges, man. Dave, uh, James Franco. Oh, James Franco is another one. Like, great. I would like, I would like to be him. He's cool. He seems, <laughs> yeah, he seems like, oh, I want to, like, I want to hang out with that guy and I want to, like, yeah. be that guy. Yeah. Yeah. His uh, brother, I, not so much. No, his yeah, brother, maybe not so much. I'm sorry. Sorry, okay, Dave, yeah. but you're not as good. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, it's like the other Helmsworth, too. <laughs> Hemsworth. <laughs> oh yeah. I love. Oh my god! Did you see that? What was that movie? There was a movie where he played like one of the Hemsworth brothers, and like he got so offended if anyone ever brought up Chris or something like in the movie, like as a joke I about how. That. I don't remember what it was, <laughs> but basically this girl was like dating a Hemsworth, but he wasn't the famous one and they like right. needed a joke in the movie about how like upset he'd get <laughs> they brought up his brother. That's awesome. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well at least he can at least he can joke about it. I don't yeah, know exactly. if it was him playing it though. I think it was, but I hope so. Uh, yeah. I hope he's that self aware. Yeah. <laughs> that would be he's he's like, hey, about yourself. hey Miley Cyrus. <laughs> I know I'm not <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I actually have a, a hand painted Deadpool on my little mug here. Oh. Uh, this is this was a Christmas gift from uh, one of our one of our friends and fans. Uh, her name is Melissa. She is wonderful, and she hand painted me a mug with Deadpool on one side and Spider Man on the other. That's cool. <laughs> and uh, I have my, a my... hey, that's awesome. <laughs> I had yeah. uh, this company paint these little cartoon things for um, my company, and I had them. I'm having them draw each dog, like breed as a different superhero character because it the dog thing is superhero themed. Right. And I had her do like Deadpool and um, Spider Man, and in the logo I put them next to each other, of course. <laughs> they have to get next to each other. So, so the fact that you you absolutely know so many dog breeds at this point, like if you could pick a breed to be Deadpool and a breed to represent Batman and a breed to represent Spider Man and a breed to represent like Thanos, what would those breeds be? Mm. So I have them picked already because I'm having her do all of the breeds. Um, nice. Yes. So I chose a. I I can't say what I would pick for Batman on an honest scale because my dog has always been known as Batman because that was like the first costume that she kind of got noticed right. for and her like her name is Merlin so everything is Mer instead of Man so we always called her Batmer and she nice. would dress up as that and then when we got the Wiener dog it was Rob Wien so Batman uh, and Rob Wien nice. <laughs> 
So they've always been those two. But for everything else, like a golden retriever for Superman is what I picked. Um, a greyhound for the Flash, of course. Um, a lab for Aquaman because they're always in the water. Um, nice. A doodle or po like a white poodle for Captain America. I picked oh, it. Oh, why is that? Why is that? Just because they're like poodles are super. Where it's not loyal, that would be a golden. I don't know. I just feel like they represent America the most because most American couples will get doodles for families. <laughs> okay, I can see that. Oh, so if we're trying to represent America, my mom has so, one. I love it. <laughs> uh, Patriotic dog. Yeah. Yep. I picked German Shepherd for Iron Man. Um, I picked a right. Corgi for Deadpool. I pay oh, good choice. Chihuahua or Wolverine because they're so little and angry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know. I was going to do Star Lord as a German short hair pointer because they're goofy and he's goofy as heck. And right. I'll see what else I have here. A boxer as the Hulk. I did a bulldog as Cyborg. Um, a great Dane is Thor. Oh, good one. Oh, nice. God. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm using like my clients' dogs colorings for these. So who's so so what's Rocket? I, I haven't gotten that far. I've only done twenty. Um so do you, do you watch raccoons? I'm putting you on the spot. That's what's happening. Like if somebody were to come yeah, with their pet raccoon. Probably a coon hound. Okay. Okay. Hey, I mean, they're too, big. they're too big to be rocket though. So they are, yeah, they are, they are way bigger. <laughs> you've you've like, answered that question way serious. All but anger serious kind of thought. So. Yeah, mine's like all serious and like makes sense. <laughs> if if you had to pick your if you had to put yourself in the uh, in one of the Guardians of the Galaxy members, which one represents you the closest? I guess Gamora. That was the one I cosplayed. I've also cosplayed Star Lord, though. Um, oh, personality wise. Gamora, I think. Gamora. It's pretty independent. So, like, yeah, I was gonna say, so like, yeah. very independent, very aware, sarcastic. Yeah. Yeah. Yet, yet loyal. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. When okay. I cosplayed her, I just used my regular hair and then put like the little red strips in it. I only did it once, but it was fun. Nice. <laughs> it was so hard to paint my whole self green. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Makeup makeup stuff, I think I've done it like once or twice and and every time it's always been a disaster. Like I can't clean all of it off and Oh, it's not about cleaning it off. It's about getting it on. <laughs> That's all that matters. Uh, yeah, but no, the aftermath is always. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't have the patience for that. That's why no, I don't no. do my hair. That's no, why no. I wear a hat. <laughs> yeah. That's um, good what's what's been your cosplay that's been the most annoying to get out of? Oh God. Or like my least favorite to wear, I guess. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. <sighs> Catwoman is pretty annoying sometimes because of the claws. Um, I'm like looking at them all right now because I don't remember. I mean, Iron Man was clearly hard. Well, yeah, that's a lot, a lot to wear. Yeah, I don't do stuff like that anymore because it's just not worth it for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Like Catwoman is okay because I can take the gloves off, but I, I won't do anything with like crazy armor anymore. I like making them more a lot easier to wear. I want them to be comfortable. Um, cable is okay because it's just the one arm. Otherwise, the rest is kind of just normal clothes. Um, the contacts dry out definitely for sure by the end of the night. I hate Got wearing it. wigs, and I do wear a wig with that sometimes. I was for that con. I was wearing a wig for that con. But for the cable really. outfit, for the cable Wait, outfit, you were wearing a wig. Yeah. What oh, about I the? Uh, totally thought you did your hair gray. I do. It was like I'm the not. same length, and yeah. Okay. 
I do sometimes, but in that particular moment, I was not. That is okay. it. Hey, the um the eye blinking does that does that mess with you? Because I feel like that no. would mess with my equilibrium. I can't, I can't see it unless I squint because it's on top of my eyelid. Oh, like, okay. it's like shining up, not so I'm in my eye. I don't know. I can't really see it. Like, do you see your eyelid really? Like. Then you focus true, on if I it. tried to, I could. Very yeah, true. But the light, the light is facing out and not in, so I don't see the blinking. Like, yeah, I can feel it on there, and I can see like the little black bottom part of it. But so I know you did. I know you did <laughs> cheetah, and the cheetah, like you're wearing very little, but it looks That's like it was good. a lot of paint and a lot. I'm not of... wearing anything at all. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> It looks like it's a lot of paint. Like, was that cool because you weren't wearing a lot? Or was it annoying because of, like, having to deal with all the paint? Well, that was just for a photo shoot. I wouldn't know. Well, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm absolutely sure you weren't walking around uh, Comic-Con as Cheetah. Some people do. As long as do they? they? Have, as long as they have the underwear on and a Band-Aid over their nipple, it's not illegal, really. Not illegal, but that would I I would feel like that was just like a very like that was just hassle waiting to happen. A lot. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I don't I didn't really enjoy it because you can't touch anything. <laughs> you can't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. I I like the easy ones or the ones that look really cool and look complicated, right. but easy. So um Gotcha. Yeah. I really like what uh, your, what's your favorite one that you've ever done? Zach Fair, probably still. It's one of my favorites. Okay, cool. I don't know if you saw that one. It's the one that's mostly on my Instagram recently. Um but yeah, I made that whole sword myself, um, on that one. And I made the shoulder pads and the belt. And restyled the wig. Is that this one? Yes. I love that one. All right. Awesome. Yeah. It it looks super cool. I love I love anything to do with anime hair. Yeah. <laughs> like I've 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 tried my entire life to have anime hair. Yeah. I've, I've had varying levels of success with it. <laughs> but that's my dream <laughs> to be able to have anime hair like it's just the coolest ever and i also love uh i i love giant weapons yeah i, do. I, 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 mentioned, I mentioned that in the show <laughs> oh yeah with the cable gun that's yeah, right it, yeah, it, All right. It, yeah. Is five, it is five feet long would you like this that's outstanding like that's just so amazing i love it anime. Final Fantasy Seven, any out? of those, any well, a lot of like Japan anime and anime stuff, like those giant swords. This it's so cool. I absolutely love it, and it'll be this like sword that's wider than your body and like four feet long, but the handle will be this little tiny thing that just barely fits in your hand. And you're like, there's no way, <laughs> there's no way, but it's so awesome. I absolutely love it. Do you want me to bring them out? Oh please! Oh yeah! Oh, yes, <laughs> it's accessible. That's amazing. Yeah, we're gonna get to see the cable gun and I'm super excited giant for giant weapons. Sword. <laughs> so, for those of you that are listening, Zia is now going to get a bunch of gigantic weapons to bring on camera. So you should at at this point, if you want to see those, jump over to strangerhoodtv.com or uh, youtube.com slash strangerhood TV. And even if you just fast forward to this section to check it out. Oh my God. <laughs> I, got, I hit the ceiling. <laughs> that is so amazing. I can't even like maneuver it. That is yeah, so you definitely cool. need super high ceilings for that, but that is that so, is yeah. so cool. So did you did you did you make that? I did. I did make this one. 
What did you make that out of? Like, how? what did you do? I have magnets on the back here. So when I wear the outfit, there's like a metal O-ring on the back. You put it right on your back? It will sit on my back, actually. Like oh, in the game, it goes back. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is the first 3D thing that I ever made. So I was pretty proud of myself. It's a P This is a PVC pipe down the middle. Um, these technically are supposed to be all the way through holes, but since I have the pipe in there, I couldn't do it. Some people do like a Y shape so that they can, but I, I was like, that's nah, fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's not worth it. Um, but yeah, this one doesn't have a small handle. It's a big handle. Yeah, oh, that's, that's substantial. Well, you, you got to be able to double hand that. It's accurate though to the game. Yeah. Like I have it to scale. That's so awesome. What a, that's such a cool, I mean, it looks perfect. Yeah. It's just made out of foam. Um, like pink, the pink foam board from Home Depot. Mm -hmm. um, and then I put EVA foam over it and then I could paint it because you can't really paint the pink foam. Right. So, yeah. So basically it's two big rectangles, cut it off to make the edge of the blade, then put the two EVA foams on um and then shave the end of the eva foam part down and then oh, that's pretty much it <laughs> that's awesome i was so addicted to that game like when i was younger like when i was a kid like final fantasy was everything like i i, I was just so into that i i spent months <laughs> yeah months of my life were just i know it's secret i've never drop. played it <laughs> Never played it. Wow. Oh. <laughs> wow. I know. Well, you I'm nailed the look. You nailed the look. I love, like, yeah, I don't have to play it or watch something to know about it a lot. Not so, at all. I actually know a lot about the game and Zach Fair and, like, how his story is and everything. But I don't need to go back and play the old game or anything to, like, get into it. Um I just kind of found out about it from other cosplayers, and I was like, I was like, oh wow, he looks really hot. And right. I, I like cosplaying the guy characters that are hot to me because I'm like, oh, they look cool, and I'm like, I want to look cool. They do. They yeah, do. So look I am definitely <laughs> like, I don't want to be a guy at all, <laughs> but I would like to just like do the character for like the day or something. I'm I'm with you 100%. Like I yeah. look at him and I go, man, anime hair. I, I want anime hair in my life. I just want it to happen. Uh, yeah. The craziest you... thing, I think, when I first did that costume and I like walked into the bathroom and I looked in the mirror and I was like, I was like, what the fuck? Because <laughs> I was like, this doesn't look like me. <laughs> and I was like, that guy's really hot. Wait, never mind. Nice, <laughs> nice. So, so in turn, you were like, I'm really hot. Yeah, and then I was Wait. like, Wait, I'm really hot. And then I was like, no wonder those two girls hit on me outside. <laughs> <laughs> thought it was funny. That's that's great. Because like, then they're like, is it a girl? Is it a guy? You don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. Hey, Andrew. I, I was doing the sexy girl characters too. Like I have a really, uh, I have the Scarlet Witch and Polaris and. Uh, Psylocke and stuff, and I do those ones. And the Polaris one is pretty skimpy, and so is Scarlet Witch. And I yeah, love the stuff too. I saw the, Scarlet, I saw the Scarlet Witch one. Um, I saw the Polaris one too. And um, yeah, definitely very skimpy. You do some, uh, you use some very like sexy photo shoots and stuff like that, which is super cool. Uh, yeah. And I like doing guy ones like as sexy characters. I don't know. Yeah, if it's like I made a female gambit so i did like the crop top pink shirt with like leather black pants instead and then for zach bear i did the well i did the female version once which was like with the leather skirt and then like the open cross top that still was ribbed like a sweat sweater ribbed like in this game um but i'll do the regular one too but i don't like doing full male regular because then it's like a little too confusing looking and i'm like eh, i don't like that <laughs> I'm like, still, I'm like i still want to be a girl <laughs> so well i think that's cool i think i think yeah. 
one of the great things about like comic characters and video game characters and things like that is that you can embody them with kind of like whatever whatever you feel it as or whatever you see it as like these characters are there for us to relate to ourselves in whatever way we can mm-hmm. and then kind of like bring that out of us so i i actually think that's really cool um i've seen like a number of cosplayers that i've seen that, that have done kind of like gender bending type of things that i just think is awesome because these characters can be anyone you know yeah. like yeah they're there it's more about who the character is and what they represent and what their personality is yeah than like with cable too what the character is. yeah exactly like, and then, like i saw all these people commenting on marvel's post and they were like like they were like uh black panther's not shuri or like loki's not a girl why is cat bald cable's right. not a girl and i was just like I was just laughing at that stuff, and I, I, I saw some people were getting like really mad back at them in the comment, in the comments, and I was like, "Man, guys, why waste your effort on those people? Just, just smile." Well, the beauty is, is that it creates that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like when you can create that, when you can, uh, like I, I love making people happy. <laughs> I love making people mad. Me too. You oh, know, like yeah, I do. Like it's fun. When you can like when you can piss someone off for something so dumb that and and then they out themselves as being an idiot. You know, it's just kind of like, oh, thank you. Give me, give me your anger. I feast on it. <laughs> give it. Yeah. To me. Num, 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 num. Give it to me. I use this. I use this as good stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I um. I took this like little test on Facebook. You know, they have those little like personality tests and whatever. Yeah. They're, they're not always accurate, but this last one I took was pretty accurate because it was like, how easy are you to get along with as a person? And it has like the different sections of like callousness, uh, grandiosity, which is like if you feel superior, um, suspicion, aggression, and stuff like that. And like my callousness one was like way up here. <laughs> And I was like, yep, that's pretty accurate. And the rest were like all small. But that's awesome. Funny. I was like, this is normally never right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, Zia, we could talk to you. Like, I, I just speak for myself. Like, I could talk yeah. to you all night. This because this has been super fun. Um, uh, we we have to cut it off just to keep things at a manageable listening level <laughs> for people. Oh yeah. But I. Ah, uh, this has been awesome. Thank you so much sure. for coming on to the podcast. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. I hope you had fun. Um, I've had a blast uh, learning about you and learning about like who you are and what you do and just uh, the littlest bit about about like your travels and your interests and things like that. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, it's sure. honestly for me, it's been super cool. So thank you so much for that. Yeah, you only get a certain amount of it, like from the show so if people like learn about you from the show i think this is none of it super cool to like none of it from the show really it's like yeah yeah. it's i don't like this this is way cooler yeah i don't like giving it out away like that i want people to meet me first and then they're like oh wow like you're you're this you're different or whatever or something so thank you for thank you for opening so much uh, opening up so much to us here on the show i i hope you had a good time i really do yeah I'll talk to anyone like this. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you so, much. so this this has been uh I, I'm Jimmy G. That's Mike Wayman. And thank you so much to our guest tonight, Zia Stark. You can find her. Zia, give us your give us your all your yeah. stuff once again, like anywhere they can find you online, where you want them to find you online. Okay. Um, Instagram is Zia Cosplay. That's also my TikTok that I just made for all my Warzone compilation videos. <laughs> and um, I also have Starks Travel on Instagram. Um, I have a YouTube page, it's Stark Events and Travel. Uh, I think that's about it. I don't really do. I don't like doing too many, or else I get confused. So mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, we do that all the time. That's yeah. We, we, we have a band, and then we're a band together, and then we have a podcast. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> welcome to our lives. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but 
again, thank you so much for all of you that are listening. Find Zia, check her out, check out her pages. They're super cool. Her cosplays on her Instagram are awesome. You can check them out. There's some really, really cool pictures. Um, all of her, uh, her dogs are on Instagram too. So check them yeah. out. Oh yeah, they're, they're the cosplay dog. <laughs> so cosplay dog. Uh, any other any other pets on Instagram? No, just the cosplay dog. Um, Kirby has her own, but I don't really, it's weenie cosplay. <laughs> okay. Weenie cosplay, like the weenie cosplay. <laughs> cosplay dog and weenie cosplay. So check them out. She's done some amazing outfits on them. She is also on the uh, Marvel 616 documentary that you could find on Disney Plus. Disney and Marvel are both not sponsors, but they could be at any time. <laughs> at any Ooh. time. Gladly. I mean, we talk about them enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, this has been Bacon is my podcast. Uh, you know, always, always question, always, always ask, what's your bacon? What's your bacon? What's your bacon? Uh, cheers to all of you. Cheers to you, Zia. Thank you for being here. Thank you for hanging out. And uh, we'll see you next time. Okay. Have a good bacon night. Have a good night. All right, so we're off. Oh, I didn't know she was going to sleep went. like that. <laughs> you can, I guess you could stop recording. All right. <laughs> <laughs>